This is Florence Griffith Jr., the fastest woman in the world. She ran the 100 meter world record of 10.49 all the way back in 1988. It's been untouched for over 30 years. The closest any woman has come to it is Elaine Thompson with a time of 10. Point fifty four, which she ran just last year in 2021. In fact, there's several women right now who are running very fast times. The most talked about seems to be, without a doubt, Shakari Richardson. I'm not done. You know what I'm capable of. Count me out if you want to. Talk all this sh Because sports fans, especially the track community, loves to compare country versus country, in this video, we're going to break down Elaine Thompson and Shakari Richardson's performances side by side to see how they run so fast, what differences they have between them, and reveal an invisible strategy that both of them are using to smoke their competition. Shikari Richardson is only 22 and she has broken the under 20 100 meter record, broken the under 20 200 meter record, broken the 100 meter record at the NCAA, and is already the sixth fastest woman in history with a time of 10.72. Elaine Thompson, however, is currently in a league of her own first woman to win back-to-back -back Olympic titles in the 100 meters and 200 meters. In total, she has five Olympic gold medals and even broke Flo Jo's 33-year-old Olympic record in the 100 meters. She's currently the second fastest woman in history with a 10.54 and the fastest woman alive. Now let's take a look at the Prefontaine Classic. Last year, Shikari came in dead last while Elaine completely dominated the field. This year, it was a different story. Disclaimer, before we get into the analysis, I must acknowledge that these data points are estimates because in order to get the most precise video analysis, we need the right camera angles, resolution, and frame rates. Nonetheless, there's a lot to learn here. In terms of reaction time, it appears that Shikari exited the blocks first because it took Elaine 0.5 seconds to leave the blocks after first movement, and it only took Shikari 0.46. It might not seem like much, but later on, you're going to see how this is part of the invisible strategy they are using, something that is so critical to their success, yet rarely talked about. From the moment they left the blocks, it took Elaine 0.06 seconds to make first contact. It took Shikari 0.06 seconds total ground contact time on the first step was 0.26 for Elaine and 0.23 for Shikari. The air time between their first and second step was 0.10 for Shikari and 0.03 for Elaine. The total ground contact time on the second step was 0.26 for Elaine and 0.20 for Shikari. To gain the full picture of what's really going on here, we must take a closer look at their mechanics from a different angle. We can see that Elaine has a more narrow position compared to Shikari. If you look at the arms on the downswing, Elaine keeps them very close to her hips. Meanwhile, Shikari has them much further away. If you look at the shoulders, Elaine has minimal side to side rotation, while Shikari has significant torso rotation, especially towards the right. Then, if we look at the legs, we see a lot less external rotation with Elaine compared to Shikari. The difference is drastic by looking at the toes pointed forward for Elaine versus slightly out for Shikari. This results in a much tighter and efficient running stance for Elaine compared to Shikari. I still believe that because everyone's body is different, it's normal to see slight differences in technique. But regardless, these details can make a big difference when we're talking about hundreds of a second. When we look at their mechanics from the front, ultimately, Elaine does have a more textbook technique honed through years of training. Here is where things get real interesting. In total, the ground contact time of their first three steps was for Elaine and for Shikari. With these numbers in mind, now we can talk about the invisible strategy. Notice how Shikari has a powerful leg recovery. You can see her swinging knee is well ahead of her supporting leg. Meanwhile, Elaine's swinging knee is about parallel with her other leg. On the third step, you can see that while Shikari is at toe off, Elaine is still pushing. Now here's the thing, one isn't necessarily better than the other. I don't believe there's a one size fits all technique since everyone's body is different. And there's more than one way to get from point A to point B. Elaine has longer ground contact times which tells me she's ground dominant. Shikari has longer flight times, which tells me she's air dominant. For context, Elaine is about 5'6", and Shikari is about 5'1". Height isn't everything, but having longer or shorter legs does make an impact. In this case, Shikari appears to be optimizing for frequency through shorter contact times and faster recovery, while Elaine appears to be optimizing for stride length through greater extension and slightly longer ground contact times in order to take advantage of longer legs that make longer strides easier because she is optimizing for her sprint archetype, which goes beyond just how tall you are. This is a concept I discuss further inside the seven day sprint bootcamp. Now, this isn't exactly new. High level sprinters do this all the time. The reason why I say this is an invisible strategy is because unless you analyze their footage 
or have a well-trained eye, you wouldn't even realize that they're doing this. Next, we must ask how many strides does it take them to cross the finish line? Then it'll all make sense. In total, it took Elaine 50 and a half strides to cross the finish line and it took Shikari 51 and a half which further suggests that Shikari is optimizing for frequency while Elaine is optimizing for stride length. In the coming weeks, I assume we will see these two battle it out in what seems to be this never ending rivalry between the US versus Jamaica, which is cool because that kind of excitement attracts new fans, new athletes, and new coaches to sprinting. The way I see it, it's not about this versus that athlete or country, but instead about celebrating what the human body can do and learning something new. Speaking of learning, you can click here here to see the weird strategies that Marcel Jacob uses in his training and how we can copy some of these methods for our own training. Click here to watch that next.